Yo, yo, everybody, back at it once again. Favorite entrepreneurs, favorite entrepreneur, your boy, official Tyree Samuels. And today we're going to be talking about, we're actually going to be going over something that's probably not the best subject, right? But it's not anything we're going to run away from. So we're going to go over another instance of a Forex setup that I went over. Did we make money? Did we lose money? If you guys want to find out, stay tuned for the next clip. I'll see you soon. Peace. Yo, yo, everybody back at it once again. Favorite entrepreneurs, favorite entrepreneur, your boy, official Tyree Sammons, right? Now, before y'all go any further, y'all know the routine. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so YouTube sees that you guys want to be able to continue getting the content that I'm going to be dropping consistently, right? And on top of that, if you don't mind, right next to or right underneath the subscribe button, you should see the thumbs up and you should see the like. So let me go ahead and get you to go ahead and tap into both of those so that YouTube sees that you guys are rocking with your boy. Now, without any further ado, we're going to be touching basis on another Forex setup. Now, unfortunately, if you already seen, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you already seen the thumbnail, you already know this wasn't necessarily what we wanted to happen. But what do we know is guaranteed to happen? The only thing guaranteed to happen in the market is losing. OK, winning is not actually guaranteed. So we need to be able to understand that it's all fun and games whenever we make money and we hit TP and all that good stuff. But we have to be able to understand emotionally, we can't get down on ourselves. Or we can't start, you know, second guessing ourselves just because we take an L. It'll be no different than, you know, a star athlete having an off game and off week, you know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. So this is actually gold. So we lost 48 pips on gold. And what I want to be able to start doing is documenting every single trade I call out in my telegram, whether it be a win, whether it be a loss, whether it be a break even. Okay. So what I'm actually going to go ahead and show you guys is if you guys look over here, actually did the due diligence, right? Shout out to the word due diligence. And this is actually called, as you can see, December 13th. So as you can see, I sent out the setup. Um, this is pretty much what it looked like. And this is exactly what we're going to be going over. Um, on top of that, as you guys can actually see, we have, um, you know, the entry to stop loss. And we actually have four different tech profits with a swing CP. Um, but, you know, obviously it didn't end up going in our favor, which is cool. And obviously, you know, I'm going to give you the update. Not one of those dudes that shies away from saying stop loss got hit. Some people I've honestly noticed when their stop loss gets hit, they just don't say anything. They'll send out a whole nother trade and never said that the last one hit stop loss. But, you know, I'm not one of those people. I want everybody to understand we are transparent and we're not going to hide away from our losses because it's a part of the game. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So what I'm actually about to do is I'm about to go ahead and use, you know, the beautiful replay tool, right, which is the best tool to be able to utilize whenever you guys are looking to what? Uh, back test, right? So let's go ahead and go over it. Now, the thing I want you guys to be able to understand is going to be fairly simple, right? So the first thing I was actually paying attention to whenever I started looking at this setup was going to be, you know, the concept of what is the overall market trend? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm not sure why I always have gas. It's like I always get gas doing these Zoom calls. So um, you guys know by now, my favorite time frame to be able to, you know, analyze is actually going to be the one hour time frame. I know people like to use four hour daily, weekly, things of that nature. Me personally, for my style, for my back testing, for my expertise, the one hour is basically the best thing that works for me. So from the one hour, I just like to be able to go as far as I possibly can with the current setup still being within the screen. So all I need to be able to view is what I'm looking at right here. So from what I'm looking at right here, technically speaking, this is a bullish market, right? Overall, it was a bullish market. OK, this market actually ended up extending for. This is gold, so I want to say that would be almost 2000 pips because it's definitely not almost 20,000. That's not true. So this market is extended up, up, up. As you guys can see, we had a very sharp downward move. And then the entire time, the market has just been correcting um, ever since then. Right. So um, with this information, we got we can actually see what the trend that we're looking for. So the overall trend is bullish, right? But the short-term trend is gonna be what? Bearish. So if we're actually looking just from here to here, right, we can actually see this market ended up dropping um, for about 1100 pips, okay? So this is a very, very, very aggressive move to the downside. The fact that we actually have this imbalance um, right up in here that you guys can see. Is going to show us that the market was moving very aggressively in this direction that it left this gaping hole. OK, so from that, the next thing I want to be able to focus on is my indicator. So the thing that I always tell people is you need to understand. Right. 
indicators can be good, indicators can be bad, right? They're bad if you don't understand the chart naked. So the thing I always advise to people is you need to take it upon yourself to understand the naked chart and have indicators help you. Don't have indicators be the only reason that you're able to take a trade. Just have them be like an additional confirmation, right? So from looking at this actual market, um, the thing that I would be paying attention to first is what was the last impulsive move, right, to the upside? Because personally, I'm looking for a buying opportunity, right? So the last impulsive move to the upside was from here to here, right? So what I can actually start off by doing is I can actually start off by taking my FIB from the low to the high, and I can see if this market is actually retraced deep enough into the FIB for it to make sense for me to look for a possible... <laughs> continuation right so as you guys can see the thing that i always talk about is on the fib i like to be able to see the market retrace somewhere between the 61.8 and the 88.6 i know it's a lot of people that like using the 50 percent. that's fine for me personally i like to be able to remove the 50 percent and just focus on the 61.8 to the 88.6 so as you guys can see we have had a very aggressive deep retracement. So that does make sense for the market to continue going higher if that's the direction we're looking to take it. <clears throat> now, the next thing I want to be able to focus on is going to be our indicators, right? So you guys already know the indicator that I love using is going to be the um, the TDI, okay? And I know I keep saying it on each video, but I'm going to go ahead and you know finally do it um, over the course of, I'm going to go ahead and knock it out. It might not be uploaded before 2022, but I'm going to definitely go ahead and make the video before 2022 so I can go ahead and have you guys understand how powerful this indicator actually is. Now, the thing I want you guys to understand is there's two different things I usually look for whenever I'm looking at the TDI. I'm either looking for the extremes to be hit and or divergence, okay? If you guys don't understand divergence, I want you guys to look up here in the top right corner, and I'm actually going to drop the video um, going over divergence, right? Um, so the thing that I really want you guys to be able to focus on is going to be fairly simple. So that is going to be this. The extremes are going to be represented by these yellow lines. So that means what we want to see hit these yellow lines is going to be this green line. So notice this green line is what we're actually looking at that's following price above, okay? So the extremes are going to be these two yellow lines that we see at the top and at the bottom. Now notice where the market currently is at this has not hit the extremes, okay? Now, normally for my style of trading, that could be a reason for me to pause or hesitate, but I'm gonna show you guys why I still went forward with this setup. Um, so the reason why I still went forward with this setup is because I actually saw divergence. So the thing I like to be able to do to make it easier for people to see divergence is I like to switch it from the candle chart to the line chart, okay? The candle chart to the line chart. And then what I'm actually do is I'm gonna take it... Um, from here to here, and I'm gonna take it from here to here. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, what, what exactly are you doing? So I'm trying to figure out to be able to define whether or not we have divergence in the market is, you wanna be able to see two different things happening, okay? You wanna see the market going in one direction, you would like to see whatever indicator you're using to detect divergence going in a complete opposite direction. So if you see from this point to this point, the market is clearly going in what direction? Down, right? It's clearly going down. But if we look down at the same two points of emphasis that are represented below, the market is clearly going up. That is going to be called divergence. Divergence is a very great tool to be able to utilize to detect when the market is becoming weak and it may be getting ready for a reversal, okay? So a lot of times I like using divergence in that instance, okay? Now, the next thing I really wanna be able to focus on is if we go ahead and put this back on the candles, um, you guys already know how I usually do. After what I've just shown you, there's literally one more step. The only step is seeing if there's an engulfing candle that I deem good enough to be able to now possibly look at an opportunity to get in this setup. So from here, if you guys notice real quick, this is where you guys see that I've already marked up the chart, right? So the reason why I marked it up is, let me go ahead and remove this. So if you guys see this very big impulsive green candle, Excuse me, I'm so sorry. So if you guys see this green um, aggressive impulsive candle, what I want you guys to notice is, look at the last time the market showed us a candle this aggressive. It was over here, right? And look what happened last time the market came back and revisited 
this candle, it continued to go. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I don't understand why I'm so gassy. So the market continued to go higher. Okay. So what I'm looking to see is if these are the only two candles of this size, relatively, basically for a while, if you guys see how aggressive it's been moving down, these are the two biggest bullish candles that we've had in relative um, spectrum. Okay. So I'm going to look at this and I was looking for this to possibly imitate what I saw here as far as create continual bullish momentum. Now, from there, as you guys know, what I like to do is from the one hour time frame, I then like to start working my way up to higher time frames to be able to see if there's going to be an opportunity. You see, I just did that. Y'all know how to do so. See if there's an opportunity to be able to, right? go about getting into the trade. That opportunity is going to be an engulfing and or institutional candle, depending on what you reference it as. So one hour, we have nothing. Two hour, we have nothing. Three hour, we have nothing. Four hour. All right, so the thing I want you guys to focus on, look at this four hour candle, right? This bullish engulfing candle can be what we can utilize to start possibly looking for an opportunity to get in the market, okay? Now, I actually kept scrolling a little bit and ended up finding the six hour candle. Now, the reason why I went with the six hour candle over the four hour candle, right? If you pay attention to this purple box, this purple box is going to represent looking for the 50% of the candle, which is like the median, the equilibrium. But if I go back to the four hour, see how this box is still bigger than this candle. So what I like to do is I like to be able to do the 50% on the biggest candle on the highest time frame. So the four hour honestly looks like a better candle, but I want the bigger candle, which is a six hour. So that's how I'm going to gauge where exactly I'm going to look for the 50%. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. Um, for me, gold, I usually just put it exactly at the 50%, uh, just because the stop loss is usually going to be bigger than what I usually take um, based off of the Forex pairs that I usually take. I know gold is a commodity, so the pip count is way different. So it's harder for me to be able to stay within a realm of my max stop loss when trading gold. So I usually get around it by giving myself the best opportunity by just putting it at the 50%. By the way, the biggest stop loss that I feel comfortable using is a 40 pip stop loss. This was 48. Um, so if this was a Forex pair, I would have passed on it. But since it's gold, it's not really so much more than what I usually am accustomed to. So that's why I felt comfortable to take it. Now, after all this information, um, it's really no reason to go over, you know, like the take profits and stuff like that, just because it didn't actually go in our direction. So it would be kind of pointless to go over that. So all in all, these are all the confirmations that I saw when I was initially looking at taking the setup. And if we see how it ended up playing out, right, let's see how it ended up playing out. So the way it actually ended up playing out, gold did not even want to make us think that we were right. It didn't want to give us the ability to think, oh, yeah, we might be right about this. No, I was dead wrong. And it's OK. And gold was like, hey, Tyree, you're wrong. And I'm like, all right, that's a bit. So as you guys see, this one six hour bearish candle by itself hit the entry and then the same candle hit the stop loss, okay? Now that's rare that the same candle that hits the entry also hits the stop loss because it's got to be a pretty big candle depending on how big your stop loss is. But all in all, this is just an example of, you know, an opportunity that I honestly can't see anything I would have done differently. And that's going to be the basis of where you want to be in your trading. You want to get to a point to where you can identify, okay, I lost the trade, but is there anything I could have done differently? Or is this just one of the losses that I just got to hold on to? And for me, this is just one of those losses that I just got to hold on to. So with that being said, guys, if you guys were able to come to the video, you were able to learn something. Don't be shy. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I want you to come back, but it's going to be harder for you to come back if you don't see when I drop the video because you're not subscribed to the channel. And then right underneath the subscribe button, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Go ahead and hit the like button. Leave a comment showing a little bit of appreciation if you want to. And with that being said, you guys know the model. I'm going to see you guys at the top, not from the top, because the bottom is way too crowded. See you when want to be a peace.